It's like we're running in circles Going around every day Getting stuck in the hurdles Of yesterday Don't you wanna go further Away from the fray Let's not get stuck in our worries We'll make our way Won't you come outside Where the sunflowers bloom Breathe in the air Look up to the moon I'll meet you outside Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. And welcome to Motivational Monday. Don't worry if it's not actually Monday when you're watching this. It's just the day that I release the videos with a motivational quote. So let's talk about the quote, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop from Confucius. So I chose this one because I hit yet another plateau. I even noticed the scale creeping up there for a few days even though I was technically doing everything right. I was eating healthy, staying in my caloric deficit, exercising, and still that scale mocked me. I knew my weight loss would show eventually, but it is real hard waiting for your body to catch up with your efforts. I wanted immediate results, as always, and I've been doing this for so long, you'd think I'd be used to playing the waiting game, but it is forever a struggle and it gets really hard when you see other people losing weight at different rates and even a certain app is telling me that under perfect conditions I should be hitting my goal weight by July and then somehow that date just keeps getting pushed back further and further but here's the thing weight loss isn't linear our bodies are all different we can't spot reduce fat and our bodies all react differently to changes and I don't know about you guys but I am far from perfect for example, my workout routine was perfect for a time, but recently I had to shift my exercise routine by a few hours. And this small change made a significant difference for me. 
it's like my mind and body were saying, okay, I've adjusted to this new routine and I'm comfortable here. But comfort doesn't always bring change. Sometimes it brings complacency or even monotony. And that's where Confucius's wisdom comes in. It's not about the speed of your progress, but the persistence of your efforts. I took time to reflect on my habits, tweak my diet yet again, and switch out my workouts to something that didn't feel so burdensome. More importantly, I focused on maintaining the healthy habits I've already built, rather than stressing over the number on the scale that will move eventually. And guess what? It paid off. I've noticed the changes in how my clothes fit, my energy levels, how I feel about the workout time, and overall how I'm feeling about this journey. Sometimes the scale doesn't tell the whole story. So if you're hitting a plateau, my advice? First, revisit your strategies. Maybe your body needs a new challenge or just some minor adjusting. Second, focus on non-scale victories like increased strength or a morning ritual that gets you pumped for the day, minus coffee. And third, keep pushing forward no matter the pace. Remember, every step forward, no matter how small, is a step forward towards a healthier you or me. It's about the journey, not the race. So keep going, don't stop, and let's celebrate all the victories, even if it's a participation badge. And if you've been through or are currently going through a plateau, drop your tips or experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear about how you're keeping motivated and pushing through. So Steven and I are on our way to go get groceries and then we're also gonna go check out uh, where our boat is and the waters around it. We have a little bit of a gale warning today, so we're not gonna go sailing today, but we do wanna get some experience in with stronger winds and raining when it's not super bad. So we're gonna go out there tomorrow for a couple hours, not a huge trip. So I'll be putting it in here instead of making a separate sailing vlog. I am also going to be taking a more active approach in the sailing. The original plan was to get me out there and get me kind of comfortable with the boat tilting, the winds. Um, I'm a nervous person. And in my head, I know that the boat isn't going to tip over. Like it is designed not to tip over. And I've watched enough videos where the boat is just like this, 90 degree angle with the water, but it's a lot for me to, to handle. So we were just gonna get out there for me to get used to it, but I wanna take a more active role. A couple things with that, I'm going to be going to a class, a two day class, 16 hours in total. What is it, the ASA? ASA 101, yeah. It's the ASA 101. Steven has done the ASA 101 and 103. And you have to study for those. And mine is May 27th. to him so he can drink. Oh, he doesn't even care. What you got there? I'm a clinometer. Clinometer. It's the thing that keeps you from screaming. What, what's a good range for that? Huh? I mean... It's all okay, isn't it? The boat won't well, tip. I would. I, I don't want to be at 30, but 15. I mean, anything less than 20 should be fine. Anything less than 20. Nope. That's not too much to get to 30. Nope. Like I said, getting to 30 isn't going to be a problem. If those, if if the rails aren't touching the water, it's fine. Should be a nice consistent breeze, which. I think a consistent breeze would be better for us too. Quite so confusing and spinning around on us. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the wind is, is blowing pretty good. Uh, the worst that can happen is that we break the boat. We'll have our life vests on. There's a little lifeguard boat cruising around. Uh, well, all boats help each other. I just got to remember that boats tilt, especially sailboats. Think we can handle it? Yeah. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, but we'll see how tomorrow goes. Okay, so right now we are currently delaying going on the boat because 
it was forecasted that we would get around two hundredths of an inch an hour of rain and we have already surpassed that in the past like 20 minutes so we're gonna go get some sailing gloves for me I think basically just stalling because we don't want to be in the rain we do have alpaca wool ponchos and blankets that Steven got us because even if they're wet they'll still feel warm uh, that's not to say that we desire to get wet though so just taking our time procrastinate procrast how do you say it procrastinating now I can't say the word pro procrastinate I can't it sounds weird procrastinating sounds weird when you say it how do you say it procrastinate He's, it sounds normal when he says it okay um, but that, that's what we're doing right now so. <laughs> So we'll get some gloves. This might be a very boring vlog. Sorry about that. It's my poncho. Do you see how they did me wrong? I'm an elf. We are going to be reefing our mainsail because I don't want to tip the boat over. Got our reefing rope. Okay, how are we doing this? You hold that end to the back of the uh, boom shoes. Okay. There. You don't need to tie it off yet. Okay. So, step one, we're going to get all of this on here. Okay. Oh, that's what what word is this for? This? Yeah. Is the head of the sail? Head of the sail. Yep. On the halyard? Yeah, on the halyard. Got it on the main halyard, yeah. Okay. And so what we're going to do, without getting a hit in the face, is basically lay this over, lay the sail over the boom. Okay. So that this point is sitting on top of there. Now we're going to feed one of those lines through. Yep. Okay. And you're going to basically gather the sail up underneath it and uh -huh. then you're going to tie a reefing, reefing knot. A reefing knot? Yep. So it's a square knot with the in the right way. Right? And so it basically it's so that both oh figure rope, eight uh, that's not a figure eight the, it's, I mean it's a it's a square knot with both with both sides going in the same side right so oh, that, so that th I'm thinking that a figure eight must be something else then that's I know that knot yeah that's it that's the, that's the reefing knot. The so thing. then I need to do that on this one too yep so I want this all to be gathered up here right we're reefing twice we're gonna reef we're gonna reef twice yes and we're going to reef twice because we can always take it out. And it's easier to take out than put it's back in. It's easier to take out than put back in when we're out on the water trying to move. I know how to do a reefing knot. Why did I think that was a figure eight? I don't know. Now, now we're going we need to let down the halyard. Now, now we're going to let it down a little. Okay. I got it. Okay. So, bring it up. And then I'll feed it on through with this one. Okay. And so then, what we need to do is the last part of this is basically taking this spot here uh -huh. and tying it to this right here. Okay. Run this here. Run this here. Through the cleat hole. Yep, just 
try a leaf knot on this. So that's that's secured. This here was on the the, the 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 bottom on the no reef. But what we don't have, we what we got to do is actually get this here out out to the outhaul. So what oh, I, because the line is shorter because the sail doesn't go all the way through to yep, here. Okay. Yep. And so because we want we want that tension pulling this out. So if we were to take off this reef. Um, under sail, we need to retie. We would either need to retie this or have another rope. And ideally, I mean, ideally, we would have ropes on each of these if we were going to be commonly, commonly. Uh, well, we probably will be eventually, huh? Probably. Right. And so, if we remove the second reef, which is what we're on, and go to the first reef, we'd have to untie it from here and tie it to he tie it to here. And let out the the reef line the reef lines we have on those. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put this back here. Tie this off to the cleat. Cleat, cleat this off. I hope you guys love my camera work. Isn't it amazing? All right. <laughs> and then there she is. All right. That's it. We're on our second reef. Do you guys want to see something sad? Not only did they do me wrong by this, but look. Look 
scary up there. Yeah. Eight degrees tilted. Yeah. Ten degrees tilted. Is it? Yep. Oh. And 3.9 knots. 4.1 knots. So let's tack back over here. Ready? Okay. Oh, I left us right in the fucking dead zone. Two knots, five degrees tilted. You grab this chair. What I'm noticing is as we come back in, my toe. As we come back in around around this point, we're catching the wind. So now over here we have less wind, and so we're a little we're a little slower. I think maybe maybe I'm lying. Two point eight knots. It is a little slower. Yep. Our tilt is just as good. Yep. You guys see a big boat out in the water, and you can barely see it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're a slew. Because we're a sloop. We're, we're a sloop because yeah. we have one mast. Yeah. And ones that have two masts are called... So it depends. So it has two masts. The tall mast is in the, the rear. So that does not makes it so not a catch. It makes it the other kind, which I don't remember. But uh, if the tall mast is in the front and the short mast is in the rear, that's a catch. I think... Tall mast is in the rear. Yeah, I, and I don't remember what the, what that's called. It's a shame because sailing is like learning a whole new language. It is. Learning and I have tried to learn new languages language. and I have failed miserably. It's not learning a new language. It's learning a new vocabulary. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, we are currently at a five degree tilt and going four knots. We did hit a little bit of extra and we are hitting some waves. I have moved over to this side because the tilt seems a lot more if you're on the same side as the tilt. And also with the dinghy training, we were taught to be on the side where you're not next to the water. So I'm gonna control the boom thing. The boom thing. I'm gonna control the main sheet. I'm letting it out because Grab the chiller. Grab the chiller? Yep. Uh, okay, let, I'm sorry, let that out. Thank you. Grab the chiller, please. Woo! Okay. Let it out a little. Let what out? The boom? The main? Right, yeah. There we go. Woo! Woo! Waves! Yep. Waves! What am I doing? There. Keep us here? Yep, all right, my tiller. Okay. <laughs> 10 degree tilt, four, five, five knots. Waves are hitting us. Okay, we're still okay. We are trying to purposefully be a little uncomfortable, so it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna put this down so that I can pay attention. I'm worried about dropping you guys in the ocean. So, <laughs> basically, until I figure out a way to make sure that the camera cannot go whoop into the water, anytime that there's too much of an angle, I'm gonna be stopping so you guys don't get to see any of that. But, our goal is is to get ourselves comfortable handling the tiller against strong currents and wind, knowing which way to get 
ourselves out of a tricky situation. Pushing our comfort levels little by little. God, it stinks over here. Yep. What the fuck? Ah, oh, what is that? Ew, it's like the ocean farted. Funnily enough, this is a racing ship. It's a pacemaker PY-23. Pace, pace ship. Pace ship, sorry. Pacemaker is a whole different thing, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a pace ship PY-23. It's a racing ship. It is built to tilt a very lot and not, what, take on water? To not, to not fall over. To not fall over, basically. It's built to go very fast, do those sharp turns, and not tip over. The only way we're gonna sink this is if we put a hole in the ship or if we let water just rush into the side for too long, which you'd have to actively be trying to do that. So we know we're safe. We just have to get used to the comfort levels and also knowing how to get ourselves back to comfort. So we're just gonna, oh God, it's getting stinkier. Yeah. Ew. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of go on the broad reach here. So we're gonna go ahead and back away. See if we can get us going a little bit further. Let's go right about there. We're going 3.4 knots. It feels like absolutely nothing, but we're on a broad reach. So yeah, let's look at those sails on a broad reach, shall we? So, can you guys see that arrow up there? That arrow is pointing where the wind is. Our boat is facing, I don't know how to say it, broadly against the wind. <laughs> we're still getting sail. We're, we're still getting wind in our sails, but our boat is pointed on a broad reach away from the wind, but not downwind. Also, thank you to the person who suggested that you lift the main sail before the jib. It was easier. Didn't have that jib trying to hit me while I was trying to get other shit done. actually you're doing a really good job going okay I can straighten it straighten out our tilts you know yep. so we just need we just need to be in this amount of wind and sitting here doing service yeah I like that right. if we're getting too far out the wind gets too much especially in this protective we can we can dance with the we can play with the wind right we can, right we know where to we, go to we get, can get out there into the wind we can come back in without when we don't want it yeah we can kind of just tease that little bit get the little bit of spicy get back in here we need to yeah, once you feel comfortable, then I'll start practicing. But I want you to be super duper 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 comfortable. <laughs> all right, we are docked. We're all done for the day. Steven is purple. We're both going to fight over a hot bath, I think. I think this is a good way to end the video. It's a good way to end the moral of the story, which is baby steps. Go ahead and take it slow if you need it. We needed it. We had a lot of fun, and I'm excited to continue to improve. Bye.